Hello, this is Vic. Welcome to my channel and thank you for viewing my videos today. I'm in the beautiful country of Panama here in Central America. There's absolutely no doubt that the Panama Canal is the eighth wonder of the world. In this particular documentary, we're going to go to the very first locks on the Pacific side of Panama Canal. These are the Miraflores locks. So let's go, let's tour the locks and let's learn quite a few things about this beautiful structure of the Panama Canal. This is Vic, let's do it. Here we can see a large cargo ship going through the uh, Miraflores locks here in Panama. This is the first part of the Miraflores locks. There are two locks all together that a ship has negotiated. That's the second part right there. So the ship has to be lifted twice through the Miraflores locks in order to proceed to the next ones about a mile away. You can see the ship here moving from one set of the locks to the second. Now the ship is moving under its own power. In this particular case, it's moving under its own power and also it's been pushed by a tugboat. The locomotives that you see on either side of the ship ensure that the ships remain in the center of the lock and do not bump onto the side. So there's constant communication between the locomotives to ensure that one pulls the ship towards one side of the lock and the other loosens up its grip constantly and therefore maintaining the ship in the center. It is a very elaborate process. The ship that you see here going through is about 120 meters in length. Just about 100,000 tons of weight. This uh, building you see here between the two locks is uh, the control tower built in 1913 by the Americans. Now I remember being in the U.S. in the late 1970s when President Carter signed the agreement to return ownership of the canal to the uh, Panamanians. And let's don't forget that the Americans owned the canal since 1914. And uh, back then the American media went absolutely crazy saying that the Panamanians could, could not maintain and control the Panama Canal because they didn't have the experience. Well, this is 2017 and everything is going beautifully here for, not just for the workers here at the Panama Canal and for the canal, but for the economy of the country of Panama as well. You can see now the ship has entered the second lock here at Miraflores. And uh, the locomotives will ensure that the ship stops before it gets very close to the other doors right there in the distance. And in a few minutes, it takes about 10 minutes to flood that part of the locks and to lift the ship up to the same level with the water 
just north of the locks right there and then the ship will be able to proceed and go forward. Here's uh, one of the original locomotives that was used by the Americans in the beginning of the 20th century after 1914 when the Panama Canal was completed. And of course, as you saw in the first part of the documentary, there are new locomotives used now and there is one here that we can look at right there let's go check it out and let's see if we can go inside now I am told that this locomotive was used up to the uh, 1980s and it is the same kind that is currently being used here at the canal to guide the ships through the locks. Now in case you wonder how it moves, there's a gear right under the locomotive that has been used to move the locomotive forward and also for braking. check the gear out in just a second so let's go under the locomotive so you can see this huge gear and that's the gear right there very effective for pulling very heavy weights and also for braking in order to stop the ship from moving too far forward it was not for the gear, of course, if the brake mechanism was dependent on the steel wheels right there. There wouldn't be enough friction to stop for an immediate stop. The wheels will skid on the steel tracks. Without the gear, the gear would instantly apply brakes. You can see the same cargo ship going through the second part of the Miraflores locks right there. And here I'm inside the control room of the locomotive. This would be, or at one time it was the seat of the driver. We can now see that the, uh, the ship is moving out of the second part of the locks here at Miraflores. The whole process to go through these two locks takes about half an hour to 45 minutes. Now by going through both of the uh, locks here at Miraflores, the ship has been uh, essentially raised by 20 meters in height. You can see the locomotives on both sides of the ship guiding it. One at the same time, the attack board in the back is pushing it forward. And what you see here, right below me, is part of the Miraflores observation post. Now let's go back to the fourth floor and let's learn a little bit about the history of the Panama Canal and some of its features. Okay, now let's uh, take this opportunity to learn a little bit about the Panama Canal and its uh, construction. There are three sets of locks on the canal, two on the Pacific side and one on the Atlantic side. I'm now on the first set of locks on the Pacific side called Miraflores. 
there are two locks here. You see the first one right there. These are the doors that join the first and the second lock of the Miraflores locks here on the Pacific side of, of the canal. So once the ship passes through these locks, now it has to pass through the Pedro Miguel locks right there in the far distance, about three miles from where I'm right now. So once the ship passes this, these uh, two sets of locks, Miraflores and Pedro Miguel, then it has to pass through a huge lake. And at the other end of the lake, you have the set of locks on the Atlantic side, the Gatun, G-A-T-U-N, locks. So essentially, these two locks here on the Pacific side raise the ship by about 20 to 30 meters, and then the Gatun locks lower the ship, and then the ship is uh, lowered down to the level of the water on the Atlantic side. Each one of these locks that you see here, you see the second one here at Miraflores, is 1,000 feet in length or just about 310 meters and the width is a little bit over 30 meters. So this is 300 meters in length right here and another 300 meters for the second lock here at Miraflores right there. Over 13,000 ships across this canal every year. And the question that you're going to ask, how much does it cost? Well, the cost really depends on the weight of the ship, not on the length or how big the ship is, but how heavy it is. And it can uh, vary, and it can go as high as $400,000. I think in 2010, a cruise ship from Norway paid about $380,000 to cross, but the average fee is about $30,000. So this ship that you saw in the very beginning that went through probably paid about $50,000 to cross. Now work for the construction of the canal started in the 1880s by the same engineering firm, French. They had just completed the Suez Canal in Egypt and it proved to be a huge undertaking. Over 22,000 people died, mostly from disease, yellow fever and malaria, and the French gave up. It was left to the Americans that started the construction of the canal in 1904 and completed it in 1914. As of uh, 1999, Panama owns and operates the Panama Canal. As I said to you, it contributes greatly to the economy of the country with uh, currently over two billion dollars in revenue per year.